that tail told me is if I start out with a probe in the front in this position right here with nothing sticking out and as it rolls over because it's not going to move once it hits the ground so the half time it's halfway over it just pushed it in the ground six inches and the second half of it rolling over it pulls it back out of the ground so it gives me time while moving on the go to take a perfect probe core so that's that's what enabled me to build this machine the rest of it is is uh goodies that, that make all of that theory work uh, but we've got two probes on this machine right now there's one there like this one we've got different size probes this tip this tip screws on right here this is what we call a sm our small tip and two of these tips right here equals one of the large tips so depending on a number of things for instance if you were doing one acre grid you don't need as much dirt i mean you need more because you're going a shorter distance. So you use a couple of big tips if you're doing a, a two and a half acre grid. Two of these tips equals one of these. So we could either use one of these or if it's in sticky, clay, wet type soils, I'll put on two small tips because they'll release a lot easier. How does it handle rocky ground? What if what what there's rock right below where that probe is getting ready to protect the tree? Well, it, that's one of the things about this high pressure air. What it does, let's walk around to this side if you don't mind that quick. If you don't look, uh, I, with this probe, this, this top set of, of tires controls the, whether the probe is in or out or in between her. And the second set of tires is this one, and both of these are in separate tracks. This probe is actually bolted, as you see right here, to the belt, mm -hmm. so this controls the attitude or the angle of the probe, mm -hmm. and this controls, this set of wheels controls the in and out mm -hmm. of the probe. So, uh, right now, it's in what we call a bypass position. It'll go by and not probe at all. And if you'll look right here, this, this is where that big wheel is running, is in the track right here. And it, it will come around and you see it's still yep. all the way up. Mm -hmm. It's not it. Nothing is sticking in the ground. However, if we have it in the probing position, which is a switch inside the cab, but I can activate it out here off of this air that I was talking about. That's in the probing position. And if I come on to the midpoint, it would be six inches in the ground. Oh, wow. And then it comes back out of the ground. So that's the, I hit a switch up there in the probing position, but when this got no current or the switch is off, we want it up because we don't want that probe sticking out and get damaged or jerky it or something. Um, so the answer was about rock, the question was about rocks and whatnot. Rocks, well, that, that goes along with what I just showed you. That, that was an air cylinder that puts this, this air cylinder right here and one over here mm -hmm. is what controls that. And I control the pressure with this gauge right here, or with the air pressure with the regulator. And so if you hit something, it will actually push the whole thing out. The whole thing up gotcha. uh, against that air pressure. And um, uh, that's what protects it. Now that's not to say that you don't hit a rock every now and then and it might chip the tip of this. This is a hardened, all of that probe and all this hardened steel, but it'll chip a little piece off or something. Which if it's a small piece, it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't hurt sure. its action or the. What's probe tip probe. life? How many samples do you think? Uh, how long does one of those last? It depends on if you're in rocks or not. <laughs> that, that's Most not of the time smart, we're not in rocks. That's not a smart answer. I mean, sure. it's, mm -hmm. these things will last a long, long time. Mm -hmm. We don't change them. Very rarely ever change one. What are those made out of? Well, it's 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 a special alloy steel that is then nitride. 
hardened okay. in a uh, it's 4130 steel okay. yep. and uh, then it's hardened after that uh, that whole tube and the tip are both hardened anyhow so the air handles that it also has another purpose in that back around here on this side because when this probe comes around the top, it goes across what we call a knockout. And if you, I'm gonna go slow and you can notice it, but it goes up a hill and then down abruptly, and then it'll go up the hill and down abruptly again, up the hill and down abruptly. And it's like taking that probe and upside down and hitting it like that. That's going into a 3 8 diameter hole into a 3 quarter inch IV tube. So it'll generally break off about right here, and the rest of it falls into an auger, and this auger runs the length of the machine. Yeah, you can see it on this side pretty easy. This is an auger. You can see this. Up here, you can see the plating on the wall. Oh, yeah. So, this is auger in this way, this auger this way. It also rotates the dirt around and drops it in an airstream that's being produced by this roots blower. This is hydraulic driven, and, and it's blowing right through the bottom between these. an hour it'll run seven seven and a half times what we like to run it you have a hard time uh, keeping up with it seven. Seven. I'm glad you asked it. If you'll notice, this is mounted on a bow here, and it's on, it sets the rollers front and back. And while, while it's on a three-point hitch, which if you turn the stuff around, this follows like it's on a trailer. It's kind of like it's had a dog. This is a cyclone that the dirt is delivered to. It has a stirrer in here that is turning all the time to keep the dirt from sticking to the cyclone. It also has another fan up here that's pulling air so that it'll make a negative pressure on the end of this tube so you don't get dusted out in the cab and really dry ground. It'll throw the dust outside. And this is a kind of a quick change uh, contraption where you push it down and move it over. You do that hurriedly and then into the next I can't, I can't operate from out here where I can see, but into the next bag. Now, he's got a computer on board, and he can see where he is in the grid, and when he crosses the grid line, of course, he changes bags. That doesn't touch anything either, but it just clears the aluminum so that it can't build up inside there. Yep. Keeps wet soil from uh, twisted on. Air's 
come in, the dirt's coming in this way and it, it goes on up into here. And it just, it's a wiper in case you're in really wet soil or sticky soil that wants to stick. We've got two readouts right here. One of them is telling us the RPM of the of the airlock, and the other is telling us the RPM of the roof's blower, so that we can see that it's operating properly. If you get a rock, and you mentioned rocks, and we'll occasionally pick up a rock that actually goes in the probe, and it didn't quite get into that airlock before the flap come around and it'll stop it. I can hit a button here and reverse it and kick the rock out and go forward again, but you'll see this RPM go to zero just like that because the rock or some obstruction got in and didn't make it all the way down into the airlock. Yeah, if you, if you, if you grab it up a bunch of this, just <coughs> like this, mm -hmm. so that's a big one. 